Now, sort of to sum this up, if I can give you any advice based on people that I have talked to, people that I know, and myself, is that if you're going to write a screenplay, write it. Finish it. Don't start and stop and start and stop and, say I'm, and, and walk around saying I'm a screenwriter or I'm writing a screenplay and don't do it. If you're going to do that, fine, that's okay if you want to give yourself a title, but work at it. Do the best you can. Uh, I would say take advice from those who know what they're doing. Um, read one or two books on screenwriting and then stop doing that and follow those rules. Um, most, of the, most of the people who teach screenwriting and most of the books are very nearly the same. You don't have to read 50 of them or 10 of them. One or two is sufficient. And then go ahead, sit down and do it. You will learn the most by doing. And then learn from your mistakes. After you've written your first, your first draft screenplay, stop and read it. And then rewrite it. Because most of the time you'll discover as a screenwriter you are doing rewriting rather than writing because most of the time a screenplay goes through two dozen drafts just to pick a number. Nobody writes one screenplay, hands it in and it gets made. It goes to a lot of finding and refining and, and editing and other people have input and that's what's going to happen to your screenplays. And then don't think that you just one that you think is a great story and you don't understand why nobody does it. If that doesn't work for you, if you can't get the interest in it, write another one and then write another one. You gotta keep writing and you'll see after you've written two or three or four that your very first one was crude by comparison and you then can go back and maybe edit that and maybe pull it out and do something with it. That happens very often and I think uh, that's probably what will happen to you. So keep writing is my main advice. If you like it, do it. But finish what you're doing and then step back, look at it, get some advice, go on and do another one. Don't get married to one screenplay and spend years trying to get that produced. Other than that, good luck. Once you have written a couple of sample scripts, you then have to deal with agents and lawyers. And if you don't live in Los Angeles, it's a bit tougher because you have to do everything by phone and by letter. But even by phone and by letter, you can get the Writers Guild booklet, you can get the agencies that exist, you can start to submit your spec material. I disagree with some people you're probably going to hear on these interviews who think that you have to write a lot of spec scripts. The more you write, the better you write. But if you write one TV spec script and one feature script, that's enough to, in the beginning to show people what you can do. The only other reason to write more is because you want to write more, you can't help yourself, you have the time, and you are trying to sell the new material you're writing, so why not just keep writing? But in terms of getting yourself recognized, you need a television script, especially if you want to make a career in television writing, and you need a feature script just to show your writing sample talent. And then, how do you get an agent? The only way I know is to call every single agency that exists in the Writers Guild booklet and telephone call, write letters, short, succinct letters, introducing yourself, asking if they'll read your script, enclosing your script if you want to. Many of them will come back unread, but just continuing to submit those screenplays to agents, hoping that an agent will call you back and say they've read your work and they like it and they want to represent you. Then the other way to go is without an agent, most studios will not read your work. They'll send it back unopened because they don't want lawsuits. But there are production companies. Every studio has production companies that are smaller than the studio itself that are on the various studio lots. And those production companies, like the Aaron Spelling Company or the Steven Spielberg Company or the you know, Whoopi Goldberg Company or the Michael J. Fox Company, whether it's a writer, director, or star, Many of them have production companies. Those can also be found in various studio directory books. And you can contact those, studio, those production companies. And you can ask to speak to the story editor or the creative affairs person or the head of development person. You can write them letters or you can call them. You can tell them who you are, that all you need is 30 seconds of their time to explain that you'd like to submit a story to them. And if they're willing to listen to you and they like your idea, they sometimes will accept a, a script on spec. Or you can send it to them in the mail with a short description in summary. And sometimes when they read that short description in your letter, they'll want to read your work because they'll be so piqued and interested by your brief description. But the best advice I can give you is keep your summaries and your descriptions brief and try to write in the beginning very commercial, high concept material. Material that you know is the kind of movie material
that the mainstream audience wants to see on a Saturday night at the local theater. And movies that are star driven, big stars in big commercial movies like Tom Hanks and, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer in a current contemporary big city situation. Those are the kind of movies that are the easiest to sell, and that's what I would concentrate on. How do you approach an agency and how do you get their interest? Uh, by and large, if you do not have any references to the agency, that is, you, you don't know people in the film and television business who can act as a reference for you and make some phone calls for you, uh, the most tested way is to simply send a letter of inquiry, a query letter, to the agents. You can get the list of uh, franchised writers representatives from the Writers Guild of America either in New York or Los Angeles. You can get the list from various reference publications in the publishing industry such as the Literary Marketplace Annual which is published every year. You don't have to buy this, you can get it in the local library. Uh, and this will list for you the names, addresses and personnel of most of the publishing agents in New York and all of the franchised agents in, in California. You then compose a, uh, an appropriate query letter um, and you address it to the agencies and you systematically work your way through those agencies that handle clients in the field that you want to be working in. Uh, there are some agencies, for example, that do not handle certain kinds of writers and they, they note that. You then contact them with a query letter. Do not send material out unsolicited because unsolicited script material for legal reasons will get dumped. It will not get read if you do not send return postage, it will get thrown away in the trash and no one will apologize to you. Uh, you'll never hear from anybody and you'll wonder several weeks or months later, how come I never heard I sent them a letter and they didn't answer me? Uh, well, if you send unsolicited material, there are legal prohibitions against dealing with that uh, and most agencies enforce them and it's pretty rigid and therefore you shouldn't just send the material on the spur of the moment. You should always include a uh, self-addressed stamped envelope and postage to get an answer back. Because if agencies are getting scores of inquiries a week or hundreds a month, they're not going to spend the postage necessary to answer each letter personally. You have to understand that merely making a phone call to someone or merely sending someone a letter does not create an obligation for someone in business to answer you back. And you cannot take personal offense if not every query is answered or if they are answered in a way that doesn't, doesn't satisfy you. Uh, this is part of your introduction to the business of writing for, for these markets, which is competition, rejection, and sometimes acceptance. But it all comes in the same pot. If you've got a good letter of query to, out to agents, you will get answers back if you send them postage. I would estimate that out of ten such queries, you're probably likely to hear back from four or five people out of the ten. About half will ignore it if they don't know you or don't have any other uh, reference to you. And of the five who answer you, probably three will say, forget it, Don't, we're not taking clients on. But you may get one or two that express an interest in seeing your work. At that point, they have solicited you to send their work, and then you can follow up and send them the specific scripts that they've asked to see. Then you wait anywhere from weeks to months for responses. And this is a long, slow process, but you can make multiple submissions. You can pursue different agencies at different times. You don't have to go one at a time and wait for endless amounts of time. You can, you can send 10, 20, 30 letters at once if you wish. Uh, you're responsible for paying the cost of all of this. Most businesses are not going to help you defray your costs by making long distance telephone calls back to you or by paying the postage to send you back the material. You should assume that any material that goes out will get trashed unless you're paying for its return. Once somebody has solicited you to send a particular piece of material, then follow up with that promptly and send a covering letter along with it to indicate that this is the case and you should get some answers. It may result in somebody saying, look, we have some points about this we don't like. And you may get editorial comment. You may get someone saying, we like this very much and we want to represent it. And if that happens, you then would enter into a, a, a more formalized business relationship with the agent or with the agency. Uh, they would ask you to look at contracts to represent sometimes a particular work. If not you and everything you've written, then they might ask you to sign a single project contract, which represents just what you've written, a particular script, script A or B or C, that they're going to submit for you and try to set up for you. If that's the case, look it over and get advice on it if you want. But for the most part, these kinds of agency contracts are fairly standard. And if any of them 
propose to commission you at more than 10%, you should probably reject them because that's not necessary. 10% uh, is the standard, it's the customary industry standard, and you don't have to pay any more than that. But uh, don't expect to pay any less either. Uh, it's, it's almost a fixed rule, and only in rare instances is it changed. But having said that, if you look at the contract, you're happy with it, and you're happy, you talk to these people on the phone, or you meet them if you're able to, and you're happy, you're auditioning them as much as they're auditioning you. But on the other hand, you need them more than they need you. And if it comes time to sign with them, at some point, make the decision and go with it, and see whether they can work for you or not. You can always get out of that after six months to a year. If they haven't done anything with the script, you're entitled to know where it's gone on a regular basis. You're entitled to a reasonable sense of communication with them. And if they go out with a script or a piece of your work for six or seven or eight months, they haven't made a sale, you may still stay with them if you reasonably feel that their efforts have been solid and they simply have failed to generate a deal. Agents do not ever guarantee you money. They do not guarantee you employment. They do not guarantee selling anything. The best that an agent can do is to minimize the odds that are already stacked against you in this business. We are not here to guarantee you that just because you now have an agent representing you, you're going to make a lot of money. It is simply not true. Um, but what we will do is we will work for you and try to get your work exposed to people who are in a position of buying it or, or hiring you for other kinds of work. And the only way to test that is to at some point make a decision and let an agent put something out on the market for you.